In this In Vivo 12 demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to start a new project and save it to an external location when we're finished. I'm going to show you how to import text documents that you will want to code later on. I'm going to show you how to format a text document for auto-coding and how to use auto-coding. And I'm going to show you how to browse the nodes that we make by auto-coding. To get started, we are on our welcome screen and we're going to just click the button that says blank project and get ourselves going. We're going to give our project a title. We're going to call it in vivo test 2018. I could give it a description if I wanted to to say this is the project that we're using for demonstration. and I'm going to click the OK button to get started. Now we see the, the in vivo workspace opening up in front of us. Now this is a little bit different. These are named a little differently from in vivo 10, as are some of the other tabs and buttons, which is one of the reasons why I'm making new videos. Uh, the program really works very much like it always has, but it looks a little bit different and things are sometimes named a little bit differently. Down the side, this left-hand side, this is called navigation view. And here we find um, some of our main parts of, of the program that we need to work with. Our data here, we find data files, our codes, which are the, our nodes or categories that we're using to code data. Uh, later we'll use find reports, which actually are, are under output. We find memos under notes. And later we'll be working with cases and we find them there as well. So this is a very important part of the, of the desktop, uh, which is called navigation view. We'll stop right there because we need to import some files before we can really look at, at the rest of the space. So the next thing we want to do is to be able to import some files. And in order to do that, we're going to go up to the ribbon at the top, the import tab. In this case, we're going to be importing text files. So we're going to just click the one where it says data, files. If this was uh, some other kind of source of data, videos or others, we'd have to go to a different place. But right now we're using data, so we click the button and it immediately opens um, to our to our desktop or to and we can search around to find out where these files are stored. In this case, they are on my desktop. So I'm going to click the desktop and I'm going to go to the file folder that says family backpack surveys. In the, dem in the demonstration data set that we're using, there are short surveys that families filled out with about five questions. There also are images of the journal pages that they filled out with their children. There will eventually be photographs. There will eventually be videos. And we'll be importing lots of different kinds of data sources over the, over the series of workshop periods that we have together. But today I'm going to import some text files. So I'm going to go to one of the folders that stands for a particular school open AG and I'm going to open the AGH classroom and you see three different text files here. I'm going to import all three of those so I'm going to click on one, hold down the shift key and I can I can highlight several at a time or all of them if I'd like and I'm going to click the open button at the bottom and I'm going to import them all at once by hitting the import button. Now, we see the files have been created here, and we can also see them under data. So data, here's files, and there we're seeing them there. Now that I've imported these three files, I realize that I'd really like to have a folder to put all of the survey files in. And then later when I import journals, I'm going to want a journals folder under data to keep all the journal files in just to sort of make it easier for me to look at them and think about them. So I'm going to create a new folder. So I've clicked on the files and I want to create a subfolder. I've gone to the Create tab and I'm going to click on Folder. It says New Folder. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Surveys. I'm going to click the OK button. And now we see our surveys folder. I'm going to go ahead and, cre and create the journal folder while I'm at it. So I'm again going to click on files so that it will be a subfolder. I'm going to again go to the folder item. I'm going to call it journals and click OK. So now I'm ready. So now I've got several files but they are actually located, they're not located in the surveys folder, that's empty. They're not located in the journals folder that I'm clicking on, that's empty. 
I want them to go in the, in, into the Surveys folder. So I'm going to click on Files, where they're located, which they're actually in the, the Parent folder. I'm going to highlight all three of them, and I'm just simply going to drag and drop them over here to the Surveys folder. Now let's click on the Surveys folder, and there they are. So they're right where I'd like them to be. So the next thing we're going to do is to browse one of these documents just so you can see what we've got here. So I'm going to come up to the Diana file and double click it. And it's going to open up for us right over here in what's called Detail View. So the surveys are in the part of the screen that's called List View. We have lists of nodes, lists of files, and the more expanded content, it's called Detail View. The part of the screen to the very left that we were working on for first is called Navigation View. And then across the top, we have the Find Bar. That's where we have a lot of our commands. And so that gives you a sense of, of some of the key parts of the NVivo screen. It's very easy to access our, our data files inside of NVivo. We simply just click on the name of the file, double click it. Now I'm opening the Amari file. And you can see the names of the files that I have open up at the top of, of Detail View. So you can see I can, there I'm in the Diana file. Now I've moved over, I could go right over back to the Amari file. And when I get ready to close them up, I just click them off.